recording. So welcome. Again, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Lena Scott. I am the cause manager for iGive.com. I am joined today by Sandy Schleicher. Hi there. And we are going to go through iGive step by step. We're going to talk a little bit about the iGive button and about how to spread the word and then some Q&A and a little bit about our next webinar. So hopefully this is all going to work the way I intended and I'm going to now jump over and see you're looking at my PowerPoint screen hopefully and I'm going to close that up and minimize it and I'm going to take you first step right here to our home page so hopefully to our Google page to my Google page I hope everyone is looking at that one of the first things that I hope that everyone is going to notice when you're looking at at Google other than some of the other things I seem to have saved here is I'm pointing up here in the upper right hand corner to our little I give seed and it just popped up and says I give menu this is what you see when you've installed the I give button and we'll be talking more about the button a little bit later on but the reason I want to mention it right here and right now is a lot of people worry that if they install the I give button on their computer that it's like this big overwhelming kind of a thing and it's going to take over their computer and I just wanted you to see that it's really small it's really easy and there's not much there however magic you click on it and you get all sorts of different options Sandy do you want to just sort of run through any of these options Sure. Well, we're going to talk about most of these things when we get to the website. These are uh, just short links that take you to various places directly on the website. So if you want to see your statistics site to know uh, whether your order from Macy's has come through already, you can click on the My Stats and then look at your shopping report. There's various other options here, the iGive homepage, your settings. Uh, and, but some important ones here like the Disable button feature. If you ever do have a problem where the button is interacting with the website and you're having any kind of a trouble, you can always use that. It'll disable the button functionality for 30 minutes and you can go on and do your business. It'll turn itself back on right away. Perfect. So let's get right to it. Most people, if they don't have the iGive button, get to iGive by typing www.igive.com. You can see I do that a lot. It comes right up for me in my choices. Well, look at that. I'm all logged in because I have the I Give button. So now I'm going to log out because I'd like to see what happens if I'm not logged in. I'm going to click here to log in again. And a lot of times this is the screen that you get to. It's a really simple screen. It, I've saved it because, by the way, I'm really bad at remembering passwords. It's like one of my, one of my things. I'm constantly always searching and trying to figure out what my passwords are. So I do save it so that I remember it, keep it easy for me. But this is a basic login page. Some people might also see a login page that looks like this one. This is Betty. Say hi to Betty, everybody. But right here, if you were joining new, you would fill out this form, your first name, your last name, email, password, and zip code. And you're ready to join and you're ready to shop. It is really that easy. But up here in the right-hand corner, it says member sign-in. So if you got to this page, and you're already a member, just click member sign in, it takes you right back here, and we're ready to go. Can't be a whole lot easier than that. So this takes you to our home page. And as you see, we've got across the top, it says, hello Lena, you've earned $7.02 of the $363.54 reach for BG Singers Larry Berkowitz Fund. You know what, I'm really excited about that one, Sandy, because the BG Singers Larry Berkowitz Fund only joined six months ago. So in six months, they've raised $363. That's awesome. It really is, and it's, um, that's the choir I sing with. If anyone's in the Chicagoland area, you're welcome to come hear me sing with the BG Singers. Um, but, uh, you know, it's nice whenever you sign on to the iGive website that you get a chance to see exactly how much you've raised, how much you've contributed to your cause. Since this is about sort of the nuts and bolts of iGive, the first place I really want to go is settings. We all know that you can shop on iGive. Shopping on iGive is great, and I promise later on we're going to talk about some of the specifics of how to shop and some of the easier ways to shop. But in support, we get a lot of questions sometimes about the nuts and bolts, the to-dos. How do I do this? How do I do that? So that's what we're going to focus on for a moment. So up here in the right-hand corner, there's a whole bunch of options. Shop search, my stores, 
all stores, stats, cause, tell a friend, settings, and logout. So let's click on settings and see where that takes us. Sandy, do you want to talk a little bit about what we're seeing here on this page and what people can do here? Sure. This is where you come to customize uh, all your, your settings and information for IGIT. So under my info is all your information about your name, address, uh, zip code, uh, password, email address. If you change your email address uh, and need to change it in IGIT, this is where you would go. Uh, if you want to change your password, uh, you know, it's a good practice to change passwords every three months or so. You could come in here and change it. Uh, you can always, the next option down is what cause you are uh, currently supporting and you can change that at any time. You know, we hear uh, from time to time that uh, supports, uh, that ca a certain cause has gone away. They, they fulfilled their mission or they closed down for some other reason and people are like, well, I don't, I don't have a, new, uh, a cause I, I'm supporting, so uh, what do I do? Well, just come in here and change your cause. You know what, Sandy? I actually, as much as I love supporting the BG Singers Larry Berkowitz Fund, I, my daughter is also um, an ice skater with the Starlight Synchronized Skating Team. So sometimes on some days when I'm making purchases, I want to support Starlights instead of the BG Singers. So I just typed in the word Starlights, I clicked to search, and look, there it came up, Starlight Synchronized Skating Club in Mattawa, Illinois, or Mattawa, depending on how you pronounce it. And I can click on Select, and that would change my cause. Oh, look at that. If you go back to the top, it says, Hello, Lena. Now I've raised $42 of the $402 for the Starlight Synchronized Skating Club. So it is that easy to change. Just remember that whatever cause you're shopping, when, uh, you're shopping at when you start your shopping visit, that's the cause that's going to get the credit. So make sure that if you want to switch causes, you do that first. That's a, a good place to start. Right. So first. if when I went shopping this morning, uh, it would have supported the cause that she previously had selected, BG Singers. Uh, if she goes shopping now, it's going to support the Starlight Foundation. Exactly. Okay. So what about other email? Stuff on, other stuff on the settings page, you can change what emails you receive from iGive, the weekly newsletter, special alerts, notifications. Uh, we're not really doing anything with daily offering emails yet, but uh, we might. it's going to be an option sometime, and uh, you can turn that on or off. And uh, there are certain emails, though, that are required uh, by being a free member of iGive, and iGive is a free service both to members and causes, and because of that, uh, you have to get, I think it's our once a quarter audit email, and causes get uh, get a, a couple of emails as well. For All right, so. The other thing on there is that privacy setting one, Sandy, and I want to explain that. So you should talk to your tax professional about whether or not your purchases at iGive could be tax deductible or not, but if your cause is a 501c3 or is a tax deductible organization, um, many tax professionals say that you can actually deduct the money that you earn, that you are donating to uh, your favorite cause through iGive. So if you don't reveal your name and your iGive results, you're anonymous to your cause and then that doesn't work. You have to say yes. So if that's something you're interested in using that as a deduction, Check with your tax professional, but also make sure you've checked yes to reveal your name uh, and your results to your cause. Also, your cause is sometimes like that because they want to be able to say thank you to you. And if you're anonymous to them, then they, uh, they are not able to say, say thank you. So back to, uh, to uh, our settings page. Tell me a little bit about Facebook and Twitter because I, I think that, you know, Facebook and Twitter confuse people. Okay, well... Um you know, I give is all helping your cause is about getting more people to support your cause. Uh, and with I give, that means more people signed up to support your cause through I give. And one way that we found that is very helpful to do that is by allowing members to, uh, to automatically post links that allow people to join I give and automatically support their cause uh, when they sign up. So people don't have to search and find the cause and, and get frustrated that they didn't spell it right. So what Facebook uh, settings will allow you to do is it, you can control how often uh, you would like a registration link to be posted to your wall 
and then uh, in Facebook, your friends will see that. It looks just like you posted it. You can do it once a week, once a month. You can choose never if you don't want it to happen. Um, but then people will see that. They can easily just click on that link in Facebook and be taken to the registration page in iGive that will allow them to automatically sign up and support your cause. Um, similarly, Twitter is similar, except it's, you know, everything's short, short sentences and tiny little links. Um, and uh, the other option there is, again, you can have iGive report to your wall whenever uh, one of your purchases comes through and you get credit for your cause. So it'll say, Lena shopped at Macy's and made a donation, an automatic donation. And when people see that stuff, it reminds them, oh yeah, I could be doing this for either your cause or, or some other cause that they may choose, and, uh, and helping all kinds of causes out there. You know, Sandy, that's a great transition to the telefriend, which is the next link right over on that top. We call it the eyebrow on the top bar. Um, so right next to settings says telefriend. You know, iGive has been around since 1997. When I tell people that I've worked for iGive and that we've been doing this since 1997, they're like, people were shopping on the internet in 1997? I mean, I know it just feels like it was so long ago, but it's something we've been doing for a really long time and we're really proud of it and we're really excited by it. And the reason we've been so successful for so many years is people like you guys, people who are listening today, who are going out and spreading the word and telling people how easy it is to have their online shopping be something extraordinary. You're doing ordinary things. You're buying things that you would normally buy, but they're extraordinary. So the Telefriend link gives you a couple of different options um, where you can just click on post on Facebook and it'll post something right that moment. Twitter, there's some, uh, you know, we'll provide you a text for email. If you click on that right now, it says, hey, join me on iGive and everybody wins. And oh, here's a promotion we're running right now. We'll talk a little more about that later. But, you know, you can, set, you can copy that and send it out to people or you can use your own Telefriend link. And that's right there and that would then give you credit. So as you see, two of my friends, Marisa and Julie, they joined using my Telefriend link. And so they show up there on my, on my Telefriend page. Next we're going to click over to the cause because, you know, that's the next question that people really have a lot of confusion about. They want to know What's going on with iGive? Am I actually raising money? I see that number on the top, but like, am I getting a check? When are we getting a check? When was the last time? So if you're not the cause administrator, you don't necessarily get as much information. Cause administrators do have access to more information. But if you are the cause administrator, you can look and see that the next check amount scheduled for the Starlights. Actually, just, just to clarify here, the information that you're seeing on Lemon's screen, this Anybody who supports the cause can see it. Can see. Right. So not just the cause administrator. So everybody who's supporting Starlights can see how much the next check amount is, how much is pending. That's money that will be sent in a check in the future once we make sure that there are no returns uh, against that. Well, let me stop you right there because that's a really important point. So people want to know what's the difference between next check amount and pending amount. And the reality is, is that unfortunately, you buy something online and you return it. We can't actually give your charity money if you returned it because if you return it, the store isn't giving us the money to give to your charity. That's just basic math, right? You shop, the stores pay, and then we pass it along on your behalf to your charity. So if you return something, we have to take the money away. Additionally, and we'll talk about this again more, but some stores have exceptions, or some stores say you can't use non-iGive coupons. And so sometimes it shows up as money is there, but then it goes away uh, because the store sent a note. Um, uh, the store sent a note that said, um, gee, you used the wrong coupon, or gee, this was an exception, and we're not allowed to do that. So that's the pending amount. And then for a cause to get a check, that number here, the next check amount that I'm sort of circling around, that one has to reach $25. So, hey, if there's anyone out there supporting the Starlight Synchronized Skating Club, you know, we, we were close this month, but we may not make that $25 cutoff, so we might not get a check this month. We may have to wait until the end of September now to get a check. So that's, that's what, you know, what was there. Um, 
So what else do you think we need to say about this page, Sandy? You can go ahead and you can click on the view issue checks. That's going to pop up a window here that will allow people to see uh, when checks have been sent to your cause, uh, whether they've cleared or not, etc. So you can see that Starlight's here has received seven or eight, looks like seven uh, checks. They've all been cashed because that cleared column is filled in. Uh, incidentally, if for some reason your cause the, it says that your cause has received a check, but you but your cause has not actually received that check, it got lost in the mail or something. After 30 days, a button will appear there next to where in that column where it says cleared that will allow you to uh, mark that check as missing. Actually, I'm wrong. That's the, how the screen used to look. Now you would click on that big red. Uh, banner at the top there, and that would take you through the process to report a check as missing, and we would void that and reissue that. So that's more of a cause administrator function, because you have to have the a cause ID and password to do that. And that's just an important thing, by the way. And next month, uh, just a preview, if you are a cause administrator, next month we're going to be doing a similar walkthrough on how to do things as a cause administrator. But um, anytime the cause administrator uh, signs on, they're always starting the process as an individual member. And they sign on just as a person and then they would go on to being, uh, to entering an area that would have your cause ID or password. Right, so there's, there's really, if you're a member, right, you log in once and you're all good to go, you shop, look at the site, whatever. If you're a cause administrator, it's actually a two-step process. You have to have a personal IDIV account first and then you can log in to the cause administrator special features. Um, and that's using a different ID and password. And uh, like I said, we'll be talking about that more next month. But um, I, you know, I interacted with the cause a couple days ago. They were having an issue and, and they told me, oh, the cause administrator left and, and we have her information, so we log in as her. And you don't need to do that. I get it free. Just sign up for your own account, and then you can administer the cause from within your own account. Uh, and that way you'll get the emails that are relevant to iGive. They're not going off into somebody else's email account who's no longer associated with your cause. So create your own account, and then you can administer from there. Um, someone just asked to explain the note about Amazon, and that's in bold type and why it's there. So um, if you were a member of iGive prior to August 1st, um, you were aware that Amazon uh, was a special program uh, within iGive where you could benefit both from Amazon Smile and iGive. And there were some special rules and ways that you had to go about using it and some special ways uh, that had to be reported. Unfortunately, as of August 1st, Amazon decided that they no longer want to help you raise funds uh, through iGive.com. So we are not working with them. If you have a purchase that was made prior to August 1st, um, they, uh, and you followed the process and the steps that you were supposed to use, your cause will get credit for that. But um, that is why it is, is bold there, and that's why it says it's an important note about Amazon. Because unfortunately, um, there have been some changes, and uh, we are no longer working with Amazon. You know, we're a little disappointed about that, as uh, many of you who have written in to tell us uh, that you are. But at the same time, they're their own business. They're allowed to run their business the way they want to. And one of the things that we've noticed is that, you know what, we have more than 1,700 stores. And that while Amazon is convenient, we have more than 1,700 stores. And many of those stores offer a much greater percentage donation uh, back to your cause than the Amazon Smile program. So we really do encourage you to um, check out what other options we have available uh, for your shopping. Before we sort of get to the true shopping discussion, I just sort of wanted to, I clicked on that cause menu and options tab because people a lot of times ask me, like, where can I find information to share with my friends or, you know, what can I do? So here are some, like, blurbs and ads that are here that you can see that talk about, that you can copy and customize um, for your cause or for your organization. Um, we have, if you go back here, we have flyers, we have banners and logos. Those are great. You can copy those. Please, please use them. Please paste them. I have to tell you, I love when I look on social media and someone's created a really cool 
design that like lets people know that I give is partnering with their cause to raise funds. I think that that has a lot of power and impact, and it lets people know um, what what they're doing. So we put them here because we want you to use them. And if you have uh, things that you're looking for or ideas, please let us know. We are always looking to update and improve our site. So um, you'll send a note to support.igive.com. You'll open a ticket there and just share with us that information there. This bottom section here, managing your cause, that was the cause administrator section. Those are the sections where you're going to need your cause ID and password. And over here are just some commonly asked questions. How does I give work? How can I maximize my earnings? So these are things, you know, that are basic questions that people tend to ask. By the way, all those questions are also answered at support.igive.com. So, okay, why are people here? Sandy, they're here because they want to shop, they want to raise money for their cause, and they want to, uh, and they want to earn donations. So, All Stores is right there. That All Stores page lists every store that we have. It's pretty cool. And if you really like a store, Sandy, you camp a lot, don't you? I do, and I buy all my camping gear at REI. You do? I do. So if I were to type in REI up here, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to show you all the matching stores that have REI in the name. So you're going to see all three of them there. Uh, if you go ahead and click that, you're going to get the, and you're going to get the results there, and you're going to see some information. Now, if you just click on the logo or the name there, you're going to go right to the store. That little heart with the plus sign next to it over on the left allows you to mark REI or, one of, or any store on iGive uh, as a favorite store. And then it will appear in your My Stores list, which you can get to through the navigation entry and the eyebrow there. I'm going to mark it now, and then we'll go back and deal with that later. What about this exceptions details thing? Okay, so if you click on, on that link or the, uh, the coupons link that was next to it, it's going to take you to this, this uh, store the specific store page which is going to show you information about that store. So notice below is a list of coupons associated with REI to help you save money in addition to the 2% donation rate. So that's money you're going to save when you buy something plus your cost is going to get the 2% donation. Huh. But also listed there are any uh, exceptions that might be relevant to that store with regard to donations. Every store Creates these rules. We don't. We're not. We don't get a say in the matter. So whatever they say there, those are the rules. And so it's always a good idea before you go to a store, certainly the first time, and you might want to check back from time to time to see if exceptions have changed. But to look at the exception information and know before you go to the store if what you're buying may not uh, be allowed for donation. So in this case, REI does not allow donations on gift cards. Everything okay. else is fair game. So I'm a big sales shopper. I love sales, so I just clicked on that 50% off, and that takes me to the REI garage and the deal of the day. And look at that. I've got some great deals that I can do. And now, by the way, I'm on REI's site. So therefore, I, I am there. Now, remember earlier I mentioned to everyone that uh, I had the I Give button, and you saw that because of the little I Give uh, seat up there? The other way you know that I have the I Give button is that right here in the bottom right corner, I've got that I Give On Save More triangle. So if you have the I Give button and you just go to a store and you click on that triangle, that same screen comes up that gives you the exceptions and the links to the discounts. Well, and the great thing about the I Give button, um, the core reason for having it, is that you don't have to go to the I Give website before you go and visit a store. You could have just typed REI directly into your browser and gone there. You know what's even better? And this is my favorite part of the iGive browser, of the iGive button. So I'm back at Google here. And I am not uh, as big a camper, but I know I'm going on a big hike and I want a water backpack, right? So I type in water backpack in Google, and all of a sudden, whoa, look at that. Here's a whole list. If you see really quickly, there are three that pop up right in the top that all have that beautiful dollar sign and the seat icon. Those are I Give Retailers. So I decide, okay, I want to go to Walmart.com. I click on Walmart. Now it takes me straight to Walmart.com 
I'm shopping. I didn't have to go to the iGive site at all. I didn't have to sign in because I had the iGive button. It's all there. I did get this confirm donation click now. Some of our retailers do ask us to do that. So I click on that and it reminds me that I'm going to have my, my purchase go there. And now I can go shopping and I can it take me right back to the water backpacks place. And now I can buy whatever I want. And again, too, if I have any questions about does uh, Walmart have any coupons today, I click on that and look at that. It's a 1.6 donation rate and it's, uh, there's no donation on purchase. It's from Sam's Club, Pharmacy Tires, Financial Services, okay, and no purchase, no donation on the gift cards or warranties. But I know exactly what's going on and I know what options I have and it's all right there for me. So, Sandy, if I wanted to install the button. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to interrupt you for a second before okay. we do that. Because uh, Cheryl asked a question about people who don't want to have their browsing tracked and what, what can you what we tell them to, she, as she worded it, to get over that. Well, the thing that's important to know about iGive and when you're shopping at iGive is that we don't pass any information about you to the store. The only information that we pass is an anonymous number. Okay, so they're going to see number 11562222. And, uh, and we don't know what you bought at the store nope. and they don't know who you are from I give now, now if you buy something you probably can give them your email address and your credit card information so now they know who, who you are that's between you and them we never see that information all we find out later is that a purchase came in this case we'll say from REI with that same number in it one two 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 five five two or whatever I said before and we match that up with your account and we then to answer another question we then notify you via an email that your purchase information came through and that the donation is automatically being made on your behalf. And it's really easy. It's really easy to install that iGive button. If you're on any page, you just click down here on the bottom in the footer, iGive button, and you can install it in just a minute or two. It will, it will help, help you be there. Additionally, iGive does not sell anybody's personal information ever. So again, for people who are worried about tracking, a lot of times people are worried about tracking because they're worried that uh, they're worried that, that someone's going to sell their information, and we're not doing that whatsoever. So I think that you know it's getting just on 1:30, and we promised that we'd keep this short and sweet. I think we've sort of explained all the different pieces, sort of how to walk through. We still do have some time for questions. I do want to remind everyone that until the end of the month. If you refer a member using your telefriend link, and we showed you how to find that telefriend link just on the top, uh, and they shop just once, you get a $5 credit for referring them, and they shop, and they get a $5 credit, so your cause can earn $10. And uh, they have a couple weeks to shop after that, but they do have to sign up by August 31st. So we've got a couple more days uh, for that promo. Sandy, are there any other questions before we... Uh, before we sign off? Yep, we have a bunch of questions here. So Cheryl asked about getting notified when a sale or donation is made. We already mentioned you get an email automatically for that. Uh, it can also be posted to your Facebook page or Twitter. We mentioned that. Uh, and you can control whether you receive that or not from your notification settings uh, uh, in the settings page we showed you. Chuck has a question. He wants to know if the donation percentage results in higher prices for shoppers. And the answer is absolutely not. Uh, Kimberly, who is in charge of working with our merchants, will actually remove a vendor who charges higher prices to iGive customers. So if you ever see a, a vendor that is charging more money than if you just went separately outside of the iGive button or outside of iGive, please, please let us know. Go to support.igive.com and open a ticket and let us know. Uh, that that's happening. So Tara asked, does the iGive button work on mobile devices? And the answer is no. But uh, we do have apps for both iOS, that's the iPad and phones, and iPod, uh, iPad, I said that already, and Android. Uh, in fact, we are in the last stages of testing a brand new version of it, which we hope to release, I'm actually going to say these words, next week is what we are hoping for. Uh, although there is a process that makes it a little slower on uh, iOS because it has to be vetted by, by Apple themselves. But anyway, new new version coming out of the apps. Uh, 
in the next few weeks. Joseph, we do not want your bank account information at all. Joseph asks, where do I go to change the bank account that's linked to my IDIB account? We don't have it. We don't want it. We, we no, send we you a check. We don't have a bank account associated. We don't collect we, we that do not. We do not collect that information, and we, we, don't, want, we don't want it. We want you to we send you a check. Um, for Actually, Ives, we send, we send your call is a check. Uh, Ives, who said that he tried the iGive button and there's an error in Safari, please open a ticket at support.igive.com and we'll try and walk you through it. It does work on Safari and you should not have a problem with it, but we can go through some of the common uh, 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 questions. Um, Rania, next month we're going to be talking more about causes uh, and organizational end of iGive, so um, we're going to ask that we not answer that question. But but if you go to support.igive.com and you go into the knowledge base for our prior webinars, there are several webinars in there that are specifically directed to causes. You're free to, to go ahead and watch those. And like Lena said, we're going to be doing an actual walkthrough, a live walkthrough like we did today on cause uh, stuff next month. So I think that that... Uh I think that that answers all of the questions. We apologize. We went to 132, so we were over just a minute or so here. But um, we hope that we provided you some great information. And again, support. This webinar will also be made available up at support if you want to review it or uh, want to show it to somebody else in the future. Or if you want to ask additional questions, just open a ticket at support.igive.com, and we will be happy to help you. So thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to uh, hearing from you all soon and have you shopping with us. Bye. Bye.